reason I participated in Run for Refugees last year was because in February, January and February, right after Donald Trump had taken the White House, uh, we saw refugees under assault um, politically in our country. And refugees always have a tough time in a new place. But in 2017 in particular, it felt like they could use all the support they could possibly get. So participating in Run for Refugees was a way to show that support and also to get the message about the needs of resettlement organizations out to more people. And I plan to do it in 2018 for exactly the same reasons. Last year, um, you know, I wasn't able to get back to New Haven, but I thought I can run where I am and I can get some friends to run where I am. And so uh, we gathered at Prospect Park and we did the loop. I wore my Run for Refugees t-shirt. We took a picture, tagged it on social media, um, and it was really that simple. And I found that people were willing to donate uh, to the proxy run, if you will. Um, and uh, I think it's a great idea to run where you can, even if you can't make it back to New Haven. So I think the best strategy for raising money is first of all to use the internet. Um, I'm very active on social media, I'm a journalist and so I have Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all tools that I use professionally and I use them to promote the run. Um, I would provide a link to the page where people could donate. Uh, I also sent out emails to friends and family encouraging them to participate and I told friends who had agreed to run with me, which was about a dozen people I think, maybe a little bit fewer. Uh, to do the same. Uh, and so when they said, sure, I'd love to run, I'll give 50 bucks or whatever, I said, awesome, also post it on your social media, tell your friends and family. And so I found that a great way to kind of get the ball rolling was to do that word of mouth type uh, messaging. The road race is the main annual fundraiser for IRIS. We need private funding to supplement the small amounts of government money that we get so that we can do more in the area of education and healthcare and employment so that we can help refugees cover their rent if they have some health issues, so that we can run a legal department to help reunite families. These are all of the additional services that we need to provide to do a good job of welcoming refugees and getting them off to a good start.